Hello and welcome to week 45 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to talk about part two of a mini four part series on FTP. And so last week we covered the basics and some of kind of the essentials, a little bit of the security on FTP. Today I want to get into IS Manager Users is another option, uh, but it's not really as straightforward as it could be. And so I'll cover some of the things that you need to consider to set this up. Now I will show you um, a lot of what, in fact most of what I'm covering today is covered in Robert McMurray. And Robert McMurray was, I believe still is, the program manager for FTP and a lot of the communication protocols, uh, or at least the transfer protocols to the server. And so he's an uh, authoritative person that knows for sure what he's talking about here. And I will include this link within my blog post too, so you should be able to just copy that if you want. And so it does have a nice walkthrough on how to do this. But I'll go through it here and show you with the video format too if you prefer. And also I will cover a little bit more that's not covered in his blog, and particularly um, how I prefer to lock down the permissions for this in this situation. And actually how Robert does it himself too. Uh, is talking to him about that. What we're going to do is let's take a look at the server itself and the setup that we need to do. So last week I talked about installing FTP. There's two different ways. If it's an IS7 or Windows Server 2008, not R2, it's an out-of-band download. Otherwise you need to, you can do it from Server Manager. And also in Server Manager, if you go in to your roles and select your IS role, and go down to add role service make sure that you have the management service here because IIS FTP leverages this service and so we'll close out of that since we've confirmed that it's installed so what I have is a leftover from last week is FTP is set up and in terms of FTP isolation level it's using the default which is FTP root directory isolation next week I'm going to be covering more details here let me show you kind of the hierarchy and the order that things would be done here. So we have, what it's going to use is rather than using Windows users, and so you could do this. For example, last week we set up this FTP user as a local user. And we could do that if you want, but let's say you don't want to use the Windows users. Let's say you have a whole bunch of administrators. You potentially want to be able to copy back and forth between machines in a shared config environment. You can do that with this, and you can do IS Manager Users. It's another method to do in it. So let's say we were to create a new one and we're just going to call this user1 and we're going to create another one. Let's call this user2. Okay, so now we've created these users. Now what we also need to do is we have to go to the management service and make sure that we're not using Windows credentials only but that we're using Windows credentials or IS manager credentials. If you're not using this already uh, no need to start the service, just make sure that you have this specified and then certain options will turn up in the various wizards here. Okay, so now we've created the user and we've enabled that. Those are the two settings that you need to do at the top level. And creating new users is always done here at the server level. Now at the site level, there are a few things to keep in mind. First off is our authentication. We need to make sure that IS manager users are granted permission or it can be used. So we go to custom providers and IS Manager Auth here. So check that and hit OK. So that's one step that's required. There are a couple things that you need to keep in mind. Uh, one is your IS Manager permissions. If we go in here, you have to now allow it at the site level too. And we're going to do an IS Manager Users. And we're going to call them User 1. Or you could do Select and select any that have been created already. And we can do Allow User. Let's say we want User 2. And we want to allow our designer here too. So we've added all the users that we know are going to have access to the site. Now that's only one of the steps. What we next need to do is to grant them FTP authorization access right here. And so we're going to go in here and some of this is left over from last week so in this case we're going to be doing specified users is user 1 is a new user we just added. We're going to give them read and write. Let's say we're going to allow user2 with just read permissions and a designer was already here with read write for example. Okay so now they've been at, granted access. Now if permissions are set up correctly this is going to work but they are not and let's go through and do a quick test. So if we do our user1 
and user1. We're going to try to connect and we just get this user cannot log in. Very useless information. And I'll cover some more troubleshooting here in the last week, on the fourth week. So here's where it gets a little bit tricky. And here it's not really very intuitive at all. Uh, so let me show you what to do. Here is where the account runs under. If you go to Administrative Tools and Component Services, and we expand this out and expand computers, expand my computer, and expand Complus applications. This FTP service runs as a Complus application. Kind of unique in the Windows world. So we go into Properties, and if you go to the Identity, notice by default it's using the network service. Now here's the gotcha, is that it needs access to two of the important files. So which is C Windows, System32, INET Serve, config and your redirection dot config. This one here, which notice network service does not have access to, and also your administration config, and that's where your users are stored. In fact, let's take a look at this. If we're in here, and we can look for user one, notice we have our user one with the encrypted password is right here, and our designer and user two. This is where it's stored. Uh, so it also needs access to here, and again, network service does not have access. So what I can do is grant network service access. We also need to grant it to the FTP route. But instead, let's lock this down further. Let's use a custom user. Because the problem with giving network service access is so many things run on as network service, you'd potentially give users full access to read this folder and read your redirection config. Not that that's necessarily any critical information here. But you, it's nice to keep that locked down. So what? we should do instead is let's give ourselves a custom user. So if we fire up computer management, go to local users and group users, and let's call this username as FTP service. And we can just say, say FTP user used for FTP service in Complus, let's say. And we're going give it, to give it a good password. You only have to know it for a few seconds until you connect here, until you create that user here. So I've created the user. Now we're going to do an FTP service. And add it here. So if I hit apply, I remember the password correctly, and that's done. Now if you have used the user recently, uh, what you're going to find here is, let's fire this up, go to components, see that uh, it's not spinning right now. But sometimes this is spinning if you've just tried it recently. And so what you want to do is go over here, right click, and shut down and that will make sure it gets a fresh start. Otherwise it will continue to use network service until you do that shutdown. So right click, shut down, and you're good to go. So now everything that we're going to do related to FTP is going to use this FTP service. Now let's go back to Robert's article here and prerequisites right here he shows type the following command and he gives an iCackles command to grant permission to the config, config folder administration, redirection, and also the FTP write, uh, FTP root folder. So we're going to start with, actually let's grab all three of those. Let's drop them in Notepad. And we're going to change network service to, actually let's do network space to FTP. Replace all. And now you see it's going to be granting access to the FTP service. So we're going to copy those into our clipboard and back on this server here we can paste and it does give us uh, access denied to one of the files but I okay that's to the schema folder we're fine and this one is fine and this one is fine so we should be set and we can do this last one manually so we're going to go into this user we'll do edit permissions or into this folder acme.com and security and we're going to add access for our FTP service. And we're going to grant modify permissions. We hit OK and OK. So now let's try it out. So if we go here to FileZilla, we'll go to our account here and yeah, make sure we have user1 and user1. We hit OK and notice we're in. And again if we were to delete the default from this side and we should be able to drag it down and drag it back over right. So we have read and write access to that account. So let's quickly set up one more just as a quick recap. And so if we were to go here into IS, 
Uh, at the global level, we're going to go to IS Manager Users. We're going to add our new one, and we're going to call it our consultant. We're going to go, we need to add the IS Manager permissions. IS Manager, we're going to select our consultant. Done. And finally, we have to give our authorization for our consultant. Should do it. We'll go back here to FTP. Let's try. And again, we're good to go. So overwrite, overwrite. We have read and write permissions both direction. So this is week 45. We have two more on FTP. Next week, I'm going to get into user isolation. If you don't want to drop a user off in the root folder of a site, there has there's a lot more control that you have. And so next week, I'm going to be touching base on that and the security considerations with it. The final week, we're going to be doing security and additional troubleshooting. How can we troubleshoot when we do have painful things to work through? Thanks for tuning in and hope to see you again next week.